Hello, in this video we are looking at the uh, one of the tutorials that we go over in class. Uh, it's creating a, uh, a character from Vector Illustration. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create kind of a cartoon whale. I wish I would show you the source photo, uh, but it's not really quite so important in this case as when we do the follow along in class. Uh, but I'm going to show you beginning to end how we build this using simple shapes and the pen tool and of course the Pathfinder for cutting and editing shapes. Uh, so those are the important elements that we're utilizing here. And we're going to start with just an oval. So I'm going to create an oval here. <coughs> uh, something along this line. And the idea of this is I'm going to cut it in half and this is going to be the basis for our body of our well, our oceanic creature. So I'm going to go back to the shape tool and I'm going to grab a rectangle. And the colors are not really important here, it's just a matter of creating some distinction between them. Uh, so that's the, the reason for me choosing different colors and all. I'm going to let the smart guides tell me when I have this perfectly lined up. Then I'm going to select both of these elements and do a minus front option to turn this into a smaller half semicircle. And I might adjust it a little bit. This is going to be my base shape, my base element, base body. So I'm going to copy and paste it, put one of these down here just to save and protect it. And this is the one that we're going to actually build with. I'll go ahead and switch it over to a kind of correct color for putting this together. Now what I want to do is I want to do these kind of stripes that go underneath. So it has kind of that, that look of a whale. And I'm going to do that fairly easily using this, this piece I have at the bottom. So I'm going to copy and paste a new one, place it directly on top, and I'm going to change the color of that as well, so again, so I can just tell the difference between them. I'll go with a brown for it. And then I'm going to paste another one, and here's what I'm going to do. I'll line them up initially, and then if I zoom in, I'm going to take this one and push it to the side some, so that I show just a little bit of that edge. What I'm going to do is then trim, using this green one, I'm going to trim this brown shape, until it is just that stripe that's literally going to run along the bottom. So I select both of those and do minus front. Now I have this little stripe here which sits directly on top of my original shape. So those are the only shapes I have right now. And what I actually want is three stripes. So I'm going to copy and paste and then paste again so that I have these three. And what I'll do with those is just alter the color a little bit. So with each one, I'll go a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter still and that'll give me the separation between them. So eventually I'll have the eye right here, I'll have the tail coming up off the back and the fins down at the bottom. However, this little effect that I've done it has created some issue, uh, one of which is this, fir this first one fits perfectly along the body. You know, it's made from the same shape, so it fits perfectly. But these that I've moved over has left this kind of dangling effect down here. You can see where these are protruding, and I don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim those off. I could take the eraser and do it. I could use the eraser tool and just trim off part of the, the bottom and I could probably get it close to perfect but instead I'm going to look at a method of getting it to where it literally trims down to the exact shape of this base body. This is fairly easy to do because I have preserved my elements and such over here. So first thing, I'm going to take a, and draw out a large rectangle. I'm going to make it a, a startling color that I can easily see. And then I'm going to copy and paste my spare body down here and basically just cut a hole using that body into this larger rectangle. So now minus front, I have this sizable hole here. And I can take this and I can copy and paste this big rectangle and place it, line it up directly over the body of this well. I'm going to have to zoom in and actually get it precise. So I'm moving it down just a hair. That looks very close. I think I've got a little gap over here on the side. So let me shift that around until I actually get it precise. There we go. And what this allows me to do is to take this, hold shift and select my first stripe here, and you can see where it extends over. I'm going to use this larger shape to just shear that off. Again, minus front. 
using the Pathfinder and that took care of one of them but you'll notice I still have another one so I need to repeat the process again for that second piece so again pasting in another one lining it up there are other ways to do this by the way but I like to keep it really simple just using the subtract the minus front option of the Pathfinder when I can I just like to do things in the most simple way possible and in this case I think this is definitely it so select the overall rectangle select that second stripe cut through it now what I have is a nice clean shape at the very bottom it's not absolutely perfect but it's pretty close never gonna be noticeable from a distance now what I'm gonna do we're pretty much done with the Pathfinder for the time being I'm gonna add the tail here using the pen tool the pen tool can be a pretty frustrating tool to deal with I'm gonna choose the correct color here but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the tail so that it, it can, feels like a continuation of this shape and these lines so I'm gonna click on the path down here at the bottom I'm gonna go kinda of directly above it here and click and start bending it and what I'm wanting to do is get this line to match up to it so I have to pull up and a little bit to the left until I start to get that more or less clean matchup. Depending on where you place it, you'll get better results. I think about right there will do the trick so I can give me a nice clean curve around. Then, before I click anything else, you can see it's already prepared to do the next point. I'm going to click right here on the middle of the whale's back and I'm just going to pull left. This little line that comes up, I'm going to want to get it horizontal because what I'm telling it to do is to run this next curve directly into a horizontal line. So if I get this horizontal and I pull far enough to make it work, again still just pulling left, I can release, finish out by clicking my original point, finish out my shape, and then what that gives me after I go back to my arrow is a clean continuation of that shape. I could have done better down here. This is not the cleanest I've ever done. You can see it got a little place around the edge something like that but it's good enough for the purposes of what I want here so potentially potentially I could just bring this corner in a little bit and improve it some but it's actually still pretty good as it is so I'm not gonna worry a whole lot now the next thing to do is to add in the fin up here at the top and this is a pretty familiar technique to what I usually do I'm not going to worry a whole lot about getting a, an awesome result from it. But just creating that half of the tail. I made it a little bit large. I'm going to drop down the size some. And then copy, paste, and then object, transform, reflect. This is a familiar technique for any time we create something that needs to be symmetrical. Object, transform, reflect and what I'll do is I'll put these two things together so that they meet each other, these two overlap and then I'll just kind of seize both of them and rotate so that they'll be in position here to be a part of this whale tail maybe even I'll move them a little bit closer together and center them up I just don't want them to be too big so I'm just going to keep resizing, scaling them down and then I have this extra bit of the tail which was expected to go over the top so I'm going to select it. It's important that you do select it otherwise the eraser will try to erase everything rather than the one shape and I'm just going to remove the bit of the tail here that extends over the fence. So what that gives me is so far in a couple of pieces I accidentally missed part of the tail there. Let me try that again. Move it down onto the canvas. That gives me nice clean effect up there at the top and now the other thing to do is to add the tail I'm sorry the fins at the bottom so same thing pen tool kind of build out his figure out what kind of shape I want to create here maybe something like that that's a nice basic fin shape and I'll rotate it a little bit so that it feels kind of like he's he's moving through the water, move it back some and this one's on top so you can see it's covering up a little bit of this underside and that's that is one thing that I want from it uh, another thing that I would want to do is copy and paste another one of these 
and I'm even going to make it a lighter blue. This is going to be the one on the far side, so it feels like it's off in the distance just a little bit. So altering the color, just making it a little bit lighter. But it's on top, which that's the problem. I need to move it back behind the rest of the well body. That's really easy to do. You just go up to the object menu, arrange, and there's an option here that says send to back. I can also do it one step at a time with send backwards, but in this case I'm going to send to back. So if I do that, that puts it behind everything else. Uh, maybe I can even rotate it a little bit more for greater effect. And now I have the feeling of, you can get a real sense of the body here, of what kind of creature this is. Maybe these fans should even be a little bit bigger and pushed up a little bit more, something like that. And that gives me my, my basic creature. Slam his tail just a little bit. I'm, I didn't do a perfect job with the tail, so now I'm, I'm getting picky about it. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the last piece here, which is to create an eye. This is really important for any character, the type of eye that you create. So, for example, if I make just a little circle down here, and that's his eye, that gives you a very distinct type of creature, type of character, really. Uh, but if I go with something bigger than that and say, do a more traditional cartoon eye, using just ellipses, just stacking these on top of each other. In fact, I'll just go ahead and create that one. And using the eyedropper here, I'll choose the blue. Say so there is a whole nother feeling to it. And we'll do one little trick, one last one here, just creating a little reflection in the eye. It gives it a lot of personality. Okay, so there's my, my basic critter here. I'll move him up and look at my layers palette. Actually, I don't even think I have my layers. Oh, here they are. They're hidden down here at the bottom. There we go. All right, so here's my, my whale. I'm going to create a new layer, put it at the bottom, and call it background, or BG is what I usually use as a shortcut phrase. And using that, I'm going to put a rectangle behind him and change it to kind of an underwater color. So is something in a teal, maybe in this case a considerably lighter one. See, I'm trying to get it to where background should not be in the middle. It should be either dark or light. And the more that I desaturate and lighten it up, the better it's going to look in the background. Or I can go the other side and darken it, and he'll still stand out there. It depends on the colors you use as far as what works and what doesn't. In this case, I'll push that a little bit more towards blue as well. I'm actually going to go on the lighter side. And what I can do now to give this a little bit of context is go back over here, grab my ellipse tool, and change it to white. And I'm just going to create some bubbles. Maybe he's got some smaller bubbles coming out from the mouth as well as his conceivable blowhole here. And I could add quite a few of those just around in general. Being pretty messy with it right now. Uh, one of the interesting things about this is right now they all feel very on the surface. That one's actually enormous, so I'm just going to get rid of it. Uh, but one thing I can do is I can take the opacity. If I select one of these, I can take the opacity option just above it. And I can drop that opacity down for some of them. The result of that will be making it feel as though there's varying depth. Some of these are further back than others and they're being affected by the density, the visual density of the water. That gives it a little bit of a dynamic, the same effect that we put on this second fin here. And so this is what it is, creating a basic character using simple tools, the Pathfinder, and the pen tool. So it's uh, not complicated to create these types of creatures. You just want to spend the time to design them, make sure they're built from these basic simple shapes and that can have a lot of appeal in a lot of different situations and a lot of different a lot of different I'm trying to think of scenarios such as designing for kids 
uh, designing for a licensed material like you might see in scrapbook stickers and things like that. Uh, this is a big type of design for those fields.